Hey gamers, Splinter Shield here. This is part two of two of my do-it-yourself division cosplay series, which means the go bag giveaway I announced in part one is now live. I'm giving away three division agent go bags plus assorted gear. Watch the entire video for complete instructions on how to be eligible. First, I just want to thank everyone out there. I've had a great response from the first video. Thank you so much. It's taken, I'm sorry it's taken me a while to get this video out, but you'll see that I am cramming a lot in here. Please like this video, subscribe, and or follow me on Twitter because I have a lot more cool stuff planned. In this video, we'll cover the other three essentials on how to put together a simple Division Agent cosplay. The sling pack or go bag, uh, appropriate weapon and sidearm, and gadgets. Now the go bag. This, this is the keystone of the entire outfit. You might notice from the pictures that agents have all different kinds of clothes, all different kinds of backpacks, but they all have a one strap backpack. A strap that crosses the body diagonally in the front. This is a signature item for division agents and a must have. However, before you go out and buy a sling pack, most of you probably have a backpack. You can probably turn it into a sling pack. Most backpacks have adjustable straps that you can disconnect by pulling the nylon strap out of the adjustable slide. Then connect the upper strap on the one side to the lower strap on the other side. Now it's a sling pack. You can A, just tuck the other straps in behind, B, cut off the other straps, C, cut off all the straps if, if they don't look that great and so a, a totally new strap. Or the last result would be to go out and buy a cheap sling pack. Look at what you have to work with and figure out which one of these will be easiest and give you the best results. One word of advice if you opt to buy a sling pack, the pack needs to sit on your back like this, not like this. Make sure the pack is not too small or you will have some major sewing of Velcro or something to make it look right. Although you might not start out with any skill gadgets, you should have a few items on your pack. In order to do this, you may want to go to your local Walmart and pick up a pack of carabiners, uh, there's some Velcro tie, there's a, you can get a roll of Velcro ties, maybe some zip ties as well, and some paracord. These are all to, to attach things to your pack. Now, some common items that you might already have to attach to your pack would be a water bottle. I see a dangling, swinging water bottle on pretty much every sling pack I see in the game. It's not hard to attach a water bottle by using a length of paracord or a velcro tire if there's a hanging loop on the bottle lid. Hang a roll of electric tape, duct tape, or something useful off the corner of your pack. A flashlight is a good idea. And of course, glow sticks or chem lights. Also, if you have a small pouch of some kind that doesn't clash with your pack, see if you can find a way to attach it or even hand sew it onto your pack. Also, a tool that could also be used as a melee weapon, even though, yes, I know, there's not really any melee in the game. A tool like this would be good, a hatchet, a hammer, a pry bar. Pro tip here. I recently noticed this concept art showing all the go bags with a strap around the base for the skill gadgets to hang on. Now the earlier art and pics don't show this, I don't consider this to be a requirement for the cosplay, and I'm not detailing on how to make any of the skill gadgets in this tutorial, but you might want to keep this in mind for later if you're planning to add to your cosplay. Next part, weapons. The guns are one of the coolest parts of the costume, but the simplest to secure. You'll want to either find a decent airsoft rifle or shotgun, or maybe you already have a decent Nerf gun at home that you can paint. You can find some good airsoft guns on eBay in the $40 range. Unfortunately, you will probably not be able to find a Chris Vector in the $40 range, but you will be able to find something decent. A quick tip if you decide to paint a Nerf gun, there are a lot of tutorials on modding Nerf guns on the internet. You can probably remove the screws and disassemble your Nerf gun to more quickly and easily spray paint it. Plus, after all the spray painting has dried, put on one more layer of clear coat to preserve the paint and keep it from being rubbed off too easily. You will also need a pistol of some kind with a thigh holster. You can keep the pistol holstered so the pistol doesn't have to look fantastic, 
Again, you can find a cheap airsoft model on eBay, but again, you might already have a decent little Nerf pistol around the house that is the right size that you can quickly paint and use instead. Always look for ways to use what you already have. Last but not least, gadgets. Smartwatch, gas mask, Isaac brick. And just figured out recently from the beta that it's called the Isaac. First, gas mask. You can go all out and buy a 3M respirator mask plus filters all together. It will be about $30-35. Uh, and this is going to push you over the $100 range I talked about earlier. If you want something cheaper, agents start out with get masks that look more like pollen or dust masks. You could spray paint the pollen mask a light gray and find a circular piece to paint a darker gray and glue onto the lower front of the mask and that'll look great. For a smartwatch, find a cheap, bulky watch with a face that is a perfect circle. I got mine on eBay for four bucks. It's a knockoff of some other brand, uh, but eBay is a great place for this. Uh, the rest of the watch is supposed to be blocky and angular, but really the circular watch face is the most important feature. Ideally, you would rig up LED lights or EL wire, but again, keeping it simple and knowing that most of the time you will be in light too bright for the LED lights to show up in pictures anyway, using paint is cheaper, simpler, easier, smarter. Uh, what I did when I was painting mine is I had some painter's tape and just kind of taped it off. I uh, had a knife, I cut a, a circle. Uh, so, you know, I just made sure that I wouldn't get paint on the actual watch face. And even if you do get paint on the watch face, you know, you, you, there's ways to remove that paint. You basically just want to have some kind of uh, neon orange paint to put on there. Now, the Isaac brick, the little comms device on the shoulder, um, is one of the trickiest things, but I, I have a very cool, simplified method for you to use. Instead of hand carving or 3D printing the brick, how about a cardboard brick? This will be cheap, easy, and relatively quick. In the description below uh, are links to some files which you can print and use as a template for making a cardboard brick. Cut it out, glue it together, and then print the overlay on cardstock. Cut it out, you can tape, glue, or staple the, overload, oh, the, the overlay on top of the cardboard and uh, you should be able to construct the bottom so that you can uh, run any, you know, your backpack straps through it or it's light enough that you could just glue it directly on your backpack if you want, if that's the simplest, easiest thing. Technically, you should have an antenna assembly coming out of the side. If you're trying to keep this simple, I wouldn't worry about it. I just haven't been able to figure out an easy way to make the antenna as the way I make it involves some fairly precise drilling on quarter inch wooden dowels using some craft foam, crazy glue, and the list goes on. But please feel free to experiment with this and let me know if you figure out a clever way to make the antenna in an easy way. <laughs> At this point, we have covered all the basics. You now have a basic division agent cosplay and you can add to it as necessary. One last note for the ladies, I've put links to a few female division cosplayers in the description in case you want to see what others have done and contact them about various details that I might not have thought of, because I'm a guy. And I've linked to a few other resources in the description for everyone. Now, the Go Bag Giveaway. Here are some pics of the Go Bags I am giving away. All of these are black or gray, so they should go with whatever outfit you might have if you're planning to use them as part of your own cosplay. All bags will come with a division patch and a cardboard brick, at least a cardboard brick. One will come with a 3D printed brick, ready to go. One will come with an extraction bag. One will come with a division hat and some other cool gear, and all will come with all will come with various other gear, things like a holster, a flashlight, or something. So in order to get one of these bags, you're going to want to follow me on Twitter. You're going to want to retweet my tweet about this video. It will be pinned to the top, so it will be easy to find. And you're going to want to do this fast. If you haven't followed or retweeted by midnight Central Standard Time, March 7th, you won't be eligible. And then you will want to stay tuned. I will be streaming The Division in the evening three times next week. And I will start off the stream with a giveaway. If you're not present in the chat to claim your prize, you cannot win. 
but I will be tweeting when I'm about to go online, and you can also follow me on Twitch to be notified when my stream goes live. One more thing. If I break a thousand followers by midnight Monday night, I will give away a fourth go bag. So stay frosty. I have more tutorials coming up, including how to make your own extraction bag, and how to 3D print your own division gear, and more. There will be more advanced division gear being given away in the months to come as well. Thanks so much for all the views, and please ask your questions in the comments.